This amateur radio roundtable is brought to you in part by ICOM America. Okay, well, you know, for somebody that's run this thing for several weeks, you'd think I'd know what buttons to push, but no, I, w I wouldn't push the no, right buttons. No, I moved buttons all the here, buttons so. around before we started well, just so you. that would happen. You know what? Well, we'll just let it go. We're not going to start the show over. Hey, everybody, uh, <clears throat> good evening. <clears throat> You're watching Amateur Radio Roundtable. Day is May 1st. This is May. It's almost time to go to Hamvention. Man. Unreal. Hey, tonight we got uh, Rich Mullison with us, uh, W2VU. We've got, uh, who, who is the uh, the uh, editor of editor CQ? Editor of CQ but Magazine. What, what's, the, what's your title, Rich? Editor? Yeah, but you got another title, too. It's longer Head than Head honcho that. in charge. You got another, another title. Ed oh, editorial shit. director. Yeah, editorial director. That means, yeah, editorial that means director. I'm in charge of my, I supervise myself. Okay, very good. And also, we've got tonight with us uh, Donna Wilbanks. Uh, everybody knows Don from Ham Nation, and he uh, is also uh, with Amateur Radio Newsline. He's going to be talking about uh, Newsline tonight. Rich is also, a, I think, a judge. And, and, and they, Don't look they, at me. They Rich play is a, the one who knows they what play he a, is. They play a part in that. We've got Glenn Popeil with us tonight. We're going to talk about going to Dayton and some of the things that he does uh, as far as his books, the Arduino books, and all oh, the mesh books, and just all kinds of things. So, um, First, let me say to uh, all our listeners out there on WBCQ, the world-famous international shortwave station, WBCQ up in Monticello, Maine on 5130. Send us an email tonight. Let us know uh, how you're uh, receiving the show. Also, if you'd like to, and if you have internet, go to w5kub.com, and you can watch the show, and you can join us in the chat room. Uh, I'd like to invite everybody, even the people in our chat room, you might might be new, uh, up the top of the menu, there's a place that says Facebook. Click on that, join our Facebook group. We've got almost 7,000 members now that follow the webcast, and uh, it's a great place to find out where we're going and what we're going to do next and, and everything. So let's, uh, let's jump over right up to uh, New Jersey. I think he's in New Jersey, and let's go up to uh, Rich and see what's going on up here. Hey, Rich, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you, and uh, sitting out on my front porch this evening, it's uh, such a beautiful night, I didn't want to uh, stay in the basement, so excuse the poor lighting, uh, but the uh, lighting in my basement isn't much better anyway, so uh, hey, hey, kind of strange to be uh, doing this without my buddy Dougal with me, unfortunately uh, he left us uh, a couple of weeks ago um, after a short illness, so uh, I'll have to see if I can do this uh, without a cat in my lap or. Well, up, I was uh, going to. I was going to ask you about that. I knew uh, you guys were very close to Dougal Air, and and Dougal, I think, had a heart attack. You said last week. So yeah. That's uh, that's terrible. Sorry but, to hear uh, that. Yeah. But uh, life goes on there, and uh, you, just think of all the good memories you have of uh, Dougal. Absolutely, and uh, is a very special part of the family. So. But, they always are. Well, Moving hey, tell us, tell us about yes. CQ and what's coming up this month. All right. Being May 1st, we've, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's the cover there you go. Uh, of Look. our digital edition. There you go. Uh -huh. uh, it's online and uh, ready to be read. Our, our main emphasis this month is on the CW results of the CQ Worldwide DX contest last November. Um, and some contest related stories as well uh, on the contest itself for those of you who say CW is dying um, we've got news for you it's not we had once again a record number of entries in the contest over 8400 stations sent in logs um, and that's not everybody who participated that's everybody just who sent in the logs we've also got some contesting related stories we've got a great story out of Curacao on a half century of contesting from Curacao at PJ2T and some earlier stations. Um, one of the, the coolest parts of this story is that the only surviving member of the 1967 initial contest team um, from Curacao was able to join the crew 
down there at PJ2T this time. They, they won the contest back in 1967, and uh, they won again with uh, this one remaining member of the team uh, back with them in Curacao. So that was very, very cool. Uh, we've also got a story about uh, a little closer to home here in New York, in New Jersey at least, um, converting a weekend DXing station to a world-class remote contesting station. Um, the ham with a station weekend house up in the Catskill Mountains who uh, was just doing some casual DXing there when he went up on the weekends and decided to turn it into a not only a contesting station, but one that could be remotely accessed and uh, remotely controlled, and uh, that's a, a great story as well. And uh, we look ahead to a couple of contests coming up. The, uh, we have the rules for the CQ Worldwide VHF contest, which is in July, as well as the U.S. Amateur Radio Direction Finding Championships, which are going to be also, I think, in July in uh, Truckee, California this year. And, of course, we've got stuff for the non-contesters as well. We have a report on citizen science in action. This was the uh, HAMSI workshop that was held here in New Jersey in February. I, I went to that, and uh, it was really an amazing collection of hams and scientists and ham scientists all comparing notes on data that was collected during the total solar eclipse last summer and uh, how it can be, the, the, how the data that a lot of the hams collected can be very useful to the scientists, and likewise how the information that the scientists get, gather and put together can be very helpful to hams in looking at propagation. And there are some, some surprises as well that were uh, discovered. Um, we've also got in math notes, a uh, very interesting piece on LED replacement for fluorescent lamps. If you're thinking about, a lot of us have fluorescent lamps in our shacks, and if you're thinking about replacing those with LED tubes, uh, it's not plug and play. There's uh, some rewiring that often needs to be done, and uh, our own math, WA2NDM, goes through what you need to do to do that. Um, Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, talks about a couple of new filter kits in his kit building column. And uh, Wayne Yoshida, KH7, KH6WZ, in his ham notebook column, goes to the other end of the building scale and uh, talks about harvesting old parts from radios that you may be taking apart and uh, reusing and talking about what parts you should keep, what parts you should get rid of. Uh, for example, old electrolytic capacitors are not worth keeping. Uh, good practical stuff all around. And, uh, of course, uh, propagation editor NW7US, Thomas Hood, has a look at the late springtime propagation to uh, help us pick the best frequencies to uh, talk to the people or places we want to talk to. And uh, that's a, a look at our highlights. We've got more, of course, but I uh, don't want to go through every article and ruin the surprise. Well, that's, some, uh, that's some good uh, information, I think, that you're talking about salvaging parts. You know, for, for 50 or 60 years now, I've been, well, I don't throw a radio away or anything, yeah. a transistor radio, anything, anything that's got parts in it, boy. I do a lot of building, and you can reuse those parts. So, man, just yeah. When I first started out, people were giving me some junk rigs and junk boxes, and I mean, it was all salvage parts for everything I did way back when. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, don't throw anything out. Uh, of course, Kathy's sitting over here. She thinks I should throw a lot of stuff out. <laughs> I should all go out. <laughs> yeah. Well, the yeah. only problem is if you get him to throw it out, he gets new. I want him to get new. Oh, you want him to get. Do you have a sister that's single or something? Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, let me tell you something. Kathy told me the other day, just go out and buy me a 7610. Just, just buy it. Well, I've got a brand new 7300 and a 991A and a TS2000 and a, uh, and a 570, but she's wanting me to go out and buy it. Isn't that nice? She's wanting me to go out and buy, go out and buy a 7610. Yeah, 
Most are like, see, I was just going to say, if you let him keep the old stuff, he has no room for the new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want him to go buy new stuff, then, you know, more so, power to you. So let's, let's get back to Rich here. Now, Rich, you, uh, you know, we'll be seeing you uh, in a couple weeks. You're going to be up yep. at uh, uh, Hamvention. And uh, Rich has uh, always been great. We're going to give away some CQ uh, magazine subscriptions uh, to people. Uh, Hambot's going to give them away, so uh, be sure and uh, tune in. Maybe you get a, a, a subscription to uh, CQ. Well, I've already got a subscription, yeah, but a yeah. renewal sure would be nice because it's that time. Well, you just yeah. log in and maybe you'll win How something. How can I log in when I'm roaming, prowling, looking for new stuff? Well, I don't know. So, hey, Rich, so we'll see you up there. We hope you get by our booth there and spend some time with us uh, uh, and, and talk about CQ. And also, uh, will you be making it to Huntsville? I expect that we will. Because um, cool. uh, to lead into uh, Don a little bit here, that's the location of the annual Young Ham of the Year award presentation and uh, we're proud to have been connected with that for uh, at least 20 years now. Well that's so, great. Uh, we always do our best to be there. That's a, a great uh, thing, the Young Ham of the Year. We've been televising it each year up there for people to watch it and uh, we have a great time there with it. So I know you're one of the, I think you're one of the judges, is that right or is that a secret? No, it's no secret. Um, as a corporate co-sponsor, we're uh, involved with uh, being part of the judging committee, and uh, it's always a, a wonderful opportunity. I, I continually tell people who say that there are no young people and no good young people coming into the hobby anymore to, that I just wish they could see the nominations that we get for Young Ham of the Year. Uh, these are, are some absolutely incredible, incredible Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really too bad that we can only give out one award each year because well, usually we've got multiple people who are well deserving of recognition. Well, there's some great, uh, great uh, kids out there that are receiving that. I've, I've known several of them personally. In fact, I nominated one of them a few years ago from Texas, and he won. I know Marty uh, won here, uh, I think, last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. So, hey, that's great. We're going to see you down there. And uh, while we're talking about Young Ham of the Year, Let's bring in Don Wilbanks. And of course, everybody knows Don. Don is uh, with Amateur Radio Newsline, and he's also uh, a regular on Ham Nation. How you doing, Don? I am awesome. It's uh, so good to see you guys. And Rich, it's good to see you. Yeah, we're uh, looking forward to seeing you in Huntsville and sharing the stage with you and an amazing young person. And, and yeah, like, like you said, anybody who complains that, you know, the that the world is uh you know going south in a handbag all you have to do is is look at look at some of the really great youth that are that are out there not only in ham radio but in other things my son uh tyler is graduating in 7 tmw by the way he's graduating high school this year so i'm not going to be making it to dayton because his graduation is later on that week but uh he uh competed in the world championships in houston texas uh, a couple of weeks ago with his uh, school robotics team and he also is in uh, the Navy Junior ROTC program in, in high school. And he's just doing amazing things. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many great kids in all walks of life and in all hobbies and all activities that are just the most amazing kids. And when you think about it, there are so many more good apples in the basket than there are bad apples. Of course, all the bad apples are the ones that, you know, that, that uh, kind of raise the smell and get all the bad press and everything but uh, there's so many good kids out there that and i say this every year on stage at huntsville that uh, all you have to do is look around and look at the great kids that are out there and our world is going to be just fine i'm i'm thoroughly convinced of it but uh, uh yeah news lines coming up uh, we're in the uh, the last weeks of the nominating period for the young ham of the year award go on arnewsline.org and click that y-h-o-t-y tab and you'll find a nominating form we've got one nomination uh, in already we've got another one or two i know of that are that are on the way and it seems like uh, rich you know this all of the, the nominations always come in in the last uh, second you know it's we get the, the nominating period is three months but it seems like the last uh, week to two to three weeks they all start pouring in so uh, we're starting to see that now but uh, it's been going on since 1986 and uh, we've been in huntsville since 1983 so you do the math this will be the 25th anniversary 
of the Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award, now the Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Memorial Young Ham of the Year Award. It'll be our 25th year in Huntsville, Alabama, and we could not have a better partner. And uh, and to have corporate sponsors like CQ Publishing and Yezu and Heil Sound and our radio waves antennas to uh, to help us honor these young kids is just amazing. So, Rich, come in and, and talk to us a little bit about what goes on in the... Uh, in your end of the judging, because that's that's an area that I have absolutely, I don't know who the, I, I have no idea who the winner is until you guys announce it, uh, until I see the, the press release, actually. So go in and tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys experience in the judging community, because I know it comes right down to, you could almost, you could almost um, flip a coin as to which, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's that close as to which kid is more deserving than the winner, right? Yeah, it com- sometimes it can be a very tough choice. Um, uh, sometimes there's someone who just rises to the top instantly, and you say this person is head and shoulders above everybody else, and the choice is clear. Uh, but that's not the common situation. Much more common is that you have several really highly qualified candidates who've been nominated, and. Uh, it, it can be a very tough choice. The uh, nomination forms are distributed to us uh, by the uh, chairman of the uh, judging committee right after the deadline. And we each go through each of them. And uh, I know I read them all very closely and look for something that stands out, something that sets a person apart from everyone else. You know, we're not looking for, okay, well, my kid was got a license at, at five years old. Um, that's great, but what is he or she doing with the license? And that's really what we're looking for, is young people who are doing amazing things with and for ham radio. And they're, they're out there, absolutely. And uh, we are, are privileged to get to know some of these people either just through the paperwork that's submitted or once we've made a selection uh, through actually meeting them. I, I'm, I'm probably the only member of the judging committee who actually gets to meet uh, the winner each year um, because uh, you know I have this kind of dual role as, as a member of the judging committee and as a representative of CQ as a corporate sponsor. So I, I have the, the double honor of being able to meet the winner of the award each year. And uh, it's something that the other members of the judging committee generally don't uh, have an opportunity to do unless they're somebody who's local to them and, and they happen to know. Um, so basically, we all, all cast our, our votes, and the chairman tallies up the totals. and. Uh, comes up with uh, a winner and that's uh, really how it's done and uh, Rich, we've uh, you very are. rarely uh, been steered wrong by the, the combined judgment of uh, the group. Do you, uh, do you get a lot of uh, entries each year or a few? Uh, how, how's it been going over the years? It seems to vary year to year. There are some years when we have uh, only a few entries to choose from and other years when we have a lot. Last year we had uh, a large number of entries and most of them were well qualified. Um, it's, uh, I think you know, part of that is on us as the ham media in how well we promote the award and uh, promote the uh, nominating period and uh, getting the word out to people to uh, make sure they get their nominations in. Yeah, and I'd like to add that W5KUB, uh, Tom, you've been instrumental in helping us get the word out and uh, also in, in doing the webcast and showing us live on the Internet, which is just uh, we've, we've been a partner with you for a long time, and we certainly thank you for the, uh, for the support with that. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, Amateur Radio Newsline been around for 40 years, and now with uh, my visibility on Ham Nation, uh, we uh, uh, so we're a lot more visible than we were, 
that's for sure and it's a it's a great thing so yeah the more we can get the word out about uh about how we can honor these these young radio amateurs and the, the things that they do i'm just looking over the list of uh, of winners since 1986 um, you mentioned Marty Soloway, KC1CWF last year, just doing some amazing things. Skylar Fennell of uh, Littleton, Colorado, KD0WHB. Uh, Anna Veal, uh, Patrick Lissandru, just amazing. Um, Andrew Koenig of Houston. Tom, I think that's the, yeah. uh, that's the young mm-hmm. man that you uh, nominated back in 2009. And I go back and look, and anybody who is uh, familiar with the ARRL will uh, certainly recognize... Um, the name of, uh, I've lost him here, it's right in front of me. Um, Brian Milashovsky. Brian Milashovsky, that's exactly Ooh. right, yeah, who is a young ham of the year. And you mentioned our... Uh, He's now one of our judges, too, by the way. That's right, that's right, he is. So, uh, yeah, we've got to, we've got a judge who was a former young ham of the year, and our judging chairman, his son, uh, won young ham of the year. And, in fact, the previous uh, judging chairman, uh, his daughter was a, a young ham of the year winner. So we have... We have some people who have first-hand knowledge of, of, of what it takes to both win this award themselves and to have kids who have won this award uh, in, the, in the judging process. So, uh, we that's- should point out that in both of those cases, the parents were not members of the judging committee when their children right. exactly. the right. they got involved with the program afterwards. Right. Bill Pasternak uh, uh, actually uh, pegged both of those guys to take over for someone who was who was leaving previously. So, uh, yeah, it's but it's it's uh, so we have people that are in the committee who know uh, who have firsthand intimate knowledge of what it takes to to win this award. And uh, they're it's the, the judging process is just in very, very good hands. So uh, it's 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 a huge honor to have been involved with this. For the last 25 years, or just about, I got involved with Newsline in '95, and I've been uh, I've made it to the Huntsville Hamfest every year. The only the only year we didn't do it was 2014, but I, I don't think I don't think we could we could pick a clear winner. Rich, you may remember back then there was nobody who really stood out head and shoulders above anybody else. I don't think, and I think that year we took a cue from uh, the Dayton Amateur Radio Association when they did not. Uh, they did not uh, award a, an amateur of the year, and so we decided that, you know, instead of just giving the award for the sake of giving the award, we're not going to do it this year. So that's the only year since 86 that we haven't had a winner. Yeah, as I recall, um, it was the only year where we didn't have someone who really came up to the standards that we've uh, right. come to expect um, in our winners, and uh, we decided as a group among the judges that it was better to not issue an award that year than to dilute the standards right and uh, i think that was the right choice yeah i i completely agree with that and it's uh it's the highlight of my year to attend the huntsville ham fest and and uh, uh you know for years i went and i watched bill pasternak give that award away and i got to meet all these winners and now since bill has passed away it's fallen on me to uh to present the award and uh uh, standing up there and sharing the stage with with you, Rich, and with our representatives from our other corporate sponsors, Yezu and uh, uh, and Heil Sound, when when Bob is there, and of course with uh, uh, with Radio Waves Antennas and Emmett. Um, but sharing the stage with with you is just it's always a thrill and a huge honor. And uh, I just I count you as just just a, a true dear friend, and, and I'm I'm so honored to to be in, in, in your circle. So I want to thank you for all the years of, of friendship that uh, personally of friendship and also with the friendship to the to the program with Newsline and the Young Ham of the Year Award. We literally couldn't do it without people like you. I certainly appreciate that and uh, reflect it back on uh, my ongoing admiration for my friendship with you and your family. Uh, you're great people. Well, we, we appreciate that. And, uh, and yeah, and I know what it's like to lose a pet. Um, it's there are furry children, and so I, I share in your sorrow for Dougal and, uh, and uh, just uh, know that uh, we're thinking about you constantly, so, uh, so there you go. I think, that's, uh, I think that's about it, Tom. I think we just remember that the, uh, the Young Ham of the Year nominating period ends March 31st at midnight, so if you know a deserving... May, 30, May 31st, thank you. It's now, where where do they send time. this? Who do they, how do they get in contact with the submission there? 
you know. Everything is everything is online uh, on our website, arnewsline.org. If you uh, punch that Y-H-O-T-Y tab, you'll see some information. And there is a downloadable form. It's in Microsoft Word format. And there is, uh, you can submit it by uh, electronically by email. And you can also, there is a post office box in New York that you can mail it to if you want to print it all out. And we do get a good, we, we get a good mix of both electronic and uh, actual U.S. mail submissions every year. So either way works as long as uh, it's postmarked, uh, I think, by midnight on uh, May 31st. And as long as we receive it by midnight, May 31st, it'll be, uh, it'll be good and, and in, the, in the hat. Okay, well, that sounds good. Now, Don, you're not going to... You're not going to Dayton this year. You've got a conflict, but you're going to watch yeah. the show. You're going to I will, be in our I chat will, room. I will watch. Yes. Uh, let Tyler me. is graduating from high school on the 24th so okay. of May. So, yeah, we uh, it's, now, it's a big month. Now, it's, what it's people don't month. realize, I, and I pull up your ID here. I mean, look, you've got an ID here. I mean, you're official. And, um, you know, we hadn't seen a whole lot of you lately. We're thinking about reducing your pay a little bit. Well, you know, it reminds me of that great song um, by Billy Preston, uh, Nothing from Nothing Leaves Nothing. Hey, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, we are going to reduce your, your pay by about 15%. I, I will okay, just say well, that tonight. Hey, okay. at least he's getting paid. Yeah. As long as yeah. as long as I I retain the uh, the gold key to the uh, to the executive washroom, I'll that's be more I'll be well, more than happy. Bad news, he's changed the lock. We changed the lock on it. I'm sorry, man. But anyway, hey, tune in, yeah, tune right. in, follow us. You might win some big prizes. Yeah. Also, hey, we rigged up a remote uh, uh, base system. We're going to be operating uh, HF from the car for our 10-hour drive from the, from the truck. Oh. Uh, so, you know, I've tried to install a mobile rig, and I've got ignition noise, and you got a little antenna, and you got all this trouble. So, hey, why not? Well, why not talk back to the to the radio at the house with an antenna of sixty feet in the air? You know. Well, as long as it covers up you talking, it'll be just fine. Well, it, it will. It will. <laughs> and, and 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 let me let me just say let me just say, Don, you've got a face for radio. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. and, and slightly off tune. <laughs> All right, man. Well, look. Hey, thanks a lot, Don, for being on here tonight. Uh, we're well, gonna, thank you. Uh, we're going to get with uh, Glenn Popil here in a minute, and we're going to awesome. talk about, uh, uh, you know, going to Dayton and some of the things. He's going to be with the ARL this year and uh, signing some books, and he's uh, written some books. So. Getting into all kinds of trouble. Awesome. Well, once again, if, if uh, to, to find that nominating form, go to uh, the Newsline website, which is AR for Amateur Radio, arnewsline.org. Click on that Y-H-O-T-Y tab for Young Ham of the Year, and that is where you will find all the information and uh, that uh, downloadable nominating form. And again, May 31st at midnight is the deadline. So if you have a deserving Young Ham that you would like to uh, let us know about, uh, perhaps we'll have uh, him or her on stage with us with me and Rich and a bunch of other people uh, coming up on the third weekend in August in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. So uh, anyway, thanks for letting me uh, get on here. And Rich, it's nice to see you again. And we're looking forward to seeing you uh, in Huntsville. And, and Tom, always looking forward to seeing you and your lovely wife and everybody else over there. So uh, I guess that'll do it from Picky in Mississippi. Thanks for letting me uh, come in and crash the party a little bit. All right, guys. Okay. Hey, appreciate it, both uh, Rich and Don. Thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Take your time and uh, enjoy it. All right. So well, let me make a few announcements here, guys, and uh, let you know what's going on. I think there's some questions in the chat room about. Uh, oh, let's see. I just got all sorts of chat what right what now. day we plan on leaving and all that. So let me kind of go over our schedule. This is getting important because we're only two weeks away now. I know. We're going to leave on May the 16th. That's a Wednesday. And if Kathy can get me up and, and around by 8 o'clock, uh, we'll be out of here about 8 o'clock or so. So uh, Tommy, he's a regular with us. Uh, Freddie's not going this year. He, he can't make it. But uh, Walter, who you all have met on the show, Walter's going with us to help out. So Tuesday, May 16th, it's a 10-hour drive. We'll, we'll leave sometime early morning. Uh, we'll have the stream up. You'll be able to watch us drive. Hopefully, it won't be a Are you repeat. Tuesday or Wednesday? I'm I sorry. It was Wednesday. I'm sorry. What did I say? Tuesday. You said Tuesday. We're leaving May 16th. That's Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday, May 6th, May 16th, Wednesday. We're leaving, and you know, uh, 
It could be boring. It could be fun. I mean, you can see us get know, you lost. We seem to have fun on those. Trips. You can see us get lost. You know, a lot's going on in a truck with that many people. Well, see, I'm calling ahead, so you'll get pulled over at least three or four times. Well, uh, for people that maybe didn't follow us, maybe seven or eight, nine years ago, and there's a video on our channel. Uh, we were stopped uh, north of Nashville doing 89 in a 70, coming back from Hamvention, and um, it was pretty uh, bad there for a while. <laughs> uh, we sat out there about an hour and people in the chat room were really interested in our well-being. They were taking up a collection <laughs> to bail us out of jail. But we, the story is, we got out of that ticket. I'll tell you about that later. Wednesday, May 16th, 10-hour drive. May 17th, that is Thursday, that's setup day. We'll be setting up in Building 2. Let me see if I can show you Building 2. This is kind of the layout of the fairgrounds right here. Uh, you can see the buildings at the top, Building 1, 2, and 3. Uh, what you don't see here is the outside flea market. It's a it's a big race track, and all the uh, outside flea market is there. But we're going to be in building number two in the center there. And if you look, I've circled it. So it's a very good location. That's the entry door to building two. And guess what? If the weather is bad, these buildings are connected with a walkway. So people can move from building to building uh, without getting wet. And they're going to be going right by us here. So that's uh, Thursday is setup day. Uh, you'll enjoy setup day. Uh, no telling who you'll see. People like uh, Bob Howe, Gordon West, uh, uh, different people will come by and get on the camera. Uh, and then the show is Friday, May the 18th, and I hope they're writing these dates down. May the 18th, May the 19th, and May 20th. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the show. And um, we'll be giving away prizes to our viewers out there. Uh, Friday afternoon, uh, I don't know the exact time yet, but our friend astronaut Doug Wheelock uh, has said that he will join us again uh, this year. So he will be with us on Saturday. And if he can get in early enough, uh, Doug will be with us. Uh, Doug will be with us on um, Friday afternoon. And for you guys that uh, maybe remember Doug, there's a picture of Doug, Doug right there. He worked a lot of people on ham radio uh, when he was the commander of the uh, IIS. So uh, the show is uh, through May 20th. It's a long drive uh, by the time we tear down and get head, head back. Yeah, it's about 10 hours. We are so tired and so sleepy, but we do have four drivers. But here's the problem. Everybody is just dead tired. Uh -huh. So the driver's dead tired. So you get the next driver, and he lasts about three minutes, no, man. Three minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. He, well, you know. count your blessings. You've got four drivers. Uh, yeah. You know how many drivers I have? Well. One. Oh, one. Oh, Me. man. <laughs> All right. So, hey, guys, that's, uh, that's uh, kind of the schedule. We're going to have HF in the truck going and coming. So you'll be able to watch the drive. You'll be able to uh, check in the chat room. We can coordinate frequencies. And uh, we'll have HF uh, in the band, in the, tr in the uh, truck. So that's a couple of things going on uh, right there. Um, while I'm talking Dayton, I I've got to bring this up and show everybody this again. We've got 60 prizes we're going to give out to everybody that uh, checks in the chat room. If Hambot calls your name, uh, you're going to win that prize. And there's some nice prizes. Antenna tuners, mobile rigs, handy talkies, uh, antennas. Uh, headsets, uh, all kinds of uh, prizes. Uh, they're free. You don't have to do anything except answer when your name's called and, and they'll be shipped to you. The uh, expense of this trip is really, really high to put on a webcast for four days, five days. And uh, we don't buy anything or sell anything there. Uh, we're going to work hard to bring you ham radio. And our motto is bringing ham radio to you. So what, we've, what we're doing, we're setting aside the CAA 500. So it's going to be a brand new CAA 500. It goes from 1.8 to 500 uh, megahertz. It's got an LCD readout here where you can plot, uh, plot your SWRs and impedances. It's a great, uh, well-built deal, uh, antenna analyzer. For every $10, we're going to put your name in a hat for a drawing for this. $20 gets you two. $30 gets you three, and so forth. We will... Uh, we will pick the winner for this uh, at noon on Sunday at Hamvention. 
and you do not have to be present to win. So don't worry about that. If we if we pick your name, you're going to win it. But it will not be this exact unit. It won't be that one. Because I haven't been paid for tonight. I don't know what that means. That, I don't know what that, that means. means. I just got paid. No, no, you didn't get paid. <laughs> you didn't get paid. No, no. You see, no, yeah, I, you're hey, I, I will not. Paid. I will not. Uh, nobody. <laughs> the most useful pieces of test equipment Absolutely. that a ham can have, really. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, take a quick break here real quick, and we'll be right back with you guys in just a moment. Communicate with the best. Communicating has never been so much fun than with ICOM. From D-Star to SDR, ICOM uses the most advanced technology in their radios. The SDR you've asked for is here. ICOM's new 7610 is a high-performance RMDR with the ability to pick out the faintest of signals even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The new ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. It has an independent dual receiver with 110 dB RMDR. Communicate with a new D-Star communications device. Easy to operate, the ID31A Plus is available in silver, red, or gold. With it, you have worldwide digital communications. You can share pictures and text messages. It's waterproof, compact, lightweight, and tough. Visit www.icomamerica.com amateur for more information on ICOM radios. All right. Well, we're back. I forgot to tell you where you can donate. At the top of our page, there's a little button that says donate. Just click on that. You can use PayPal, use a credit card. Really simple, whatever you want to do. And uh, really appreciate uh, any support that you can give us here. So, um, very quick, in case we've got some new people in the chat room, uh, click on our Facebook link at the top of the page. And, uh, whoa, there's oh, money coming in already. There's money falling from the skies. Click on our Facebook. Join our Facebook group at the top. Look at that. <laughs> a donation just came in, guys. Isn't that something? I mean, yeah, how... It, it just falls from the sky in here, man. It came out the speaker. or the, yeah. I don't know. Uh, thank you. Well, okay. Uh, so, click on our Facebook. Join our Facebook group. We've got about 6,500, 6,700 members now. And uh, it's a great place just to put ham radio uh, pictures. Put your shack pictures in there. We show uh, Katie uh, does a lot of shack pictures. And we talk about your shack. So, post your shack pictures there. Hey, next week, uh, Riley Hollinsworth, uh, retired um, special counsel to the FCC uh, for the Amateur Radio Enforcement Bureau. Uh, Riley will be back with us next week. Riley is going to preach a little bit. And also, Riley has uh, 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 a lot of the questions that you have sent in. So uh, he'll be answering your questions next week. Uh, and then, hey, the next Tuesday, we're packing the truck up. We're going to tear down the studio, and we're going to put it in the truck Tuesday night. So we may not have a show Tuesday night right before Hamvention. Let's get here with our good friend, Glenn Popil. And let's let's see what he wants to talk about tonight. Uh, We're going to talk about Dayton and your book. Well, I and, want to first talk uh, about the money that falls from the skies wow, here. Wow, look you know, at this. This is just cool. Look at this. You know, I need to come over here more often. That don't that doesn't look real. Look, no, it look doesn't look picture. real. It was just printed about an hour ago. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what I want to talk about is pretty much what you want to talk about. I am wired for sound for Dayton. All uh, right. You know it's. It seems like it was just yesterday we were coming home from it now. I mean, we went the long it winter does. and it does. felt like forever. But uh, kind of wanted to talk a couple of the things of what I've been doing and keeping myself busy in between. Now, you all know I, after I finished the last book that came out right at Dayton last year, I pretty much took the time off to rebuild, redo, repaint, redo everything in the house. And that's been a almost a year-long affair. But got that finished up not long ago and starting to gear up for Dayton and uh, do some events here. I did the uh, Mississippi QSO party, uh, 1st of April, and we decided to activate Issaquina County, Mississippi. Now, y'all look on your maps and see where Issaquina County, Mississippi is. Oh, wait, wait, is. did you say y'all look? I said y'all. Okay. Uh, and I am telling you right now, if there is a place that is close to nowhere as possible, Issaquina County is it. There are zero licensed hams in the county, so that's why we chose to light it up and working down there with a team uh, put together by Frank K4FMH. And uh, this is the 1st of April. 
By the time we got down there that Saturday morning, it was 42 degrees, 20 degree wind chills. We're out in a pavilion in the middle of nowhere, Mississippi. The bugs are humming the theme to deliverance down there. I mean, it Man. is just... So we froze our butts off down there you, for, for you know, that day. You, you like picking places like that. I can remember the first time I came down <laughs> to do a webcast <laughs> with you at Field Day. Uh, I didn't even, we needed a boat to get yeah, there. Yeah, you needed a boat to get there. We had three inches of water in the pavilion, and the pavilion was on a, a hill. Y'all were on top of the tables, I think, yes. trying to, uh, I don't know, hold the tarps down on the radio. Hold the tarps down and try to find somebody to build us an ark real quick. And there were actually ducks swimming across. Swimming across, yeah. Right, right there, that place. Yeah, wow. That was unreal that year. Well, we were invited to go down here, but it was just a little far for yeah, us to go. It was and, pretty far. And, and the fact now that it was 40 degrees, yeah, I would yeah. not have enjoyed but, you it. Know, it, was a, it was a good concept and a, and a, a great idea. Uh, just the, the weather didn't cooperate at all. And then uh, you, you saw me a couple of weeks ago there at Free Fest. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that was a lot of fun. I always love Free mm -hmm. Fest, and the proceeds all go to Le Bonner. So it's a, it's a really fun one-day ham fest. So that kind of got us to carry over to Dayton, you know, I'm, I'm just ready for flea market and buying toys at Dayton. Uh, one of the things I did do in between um, at the Jackson Ham Fest in January, I bought a, one of the cobweb antennas. And I bought the, the latest version that's got the 40 meter and 30 meter add-on mm -hmm. as well as 6 meter. So I bought the full cobweb. Bought that at, in January. I just last week finally got it up in the air and tuned because the weather has just been so horrible yeah. this winter. But we got the cobweb up, and I saw a question in the chat room <clears throat> earlier uh, about a good QRP antenna. I am really happy with that cobweb. It, it's an excellent little antenna. Not little, but uh, I think it's a great idea for a, for a QRP uh, antenna. And uh, mm -hmm. I really, really like that. And that's going to be my digital mode. Uh, someone that made a comment in the chat room that a lot of people may have lost uh, the chat room, Kathy. She's got earphones on. No, I don't think me. it was the chat room so much as they may have lost their internet connection. Well, yeah, but we went down to 24 yeah. users there. So I, I don't know. wanting to watch me on the show, we just overloaded yeah. the internet. Well, you know, the thing is we bring Glenn Popil on and uh, everybody leaves. I, I, I'm going to have to evaluate I, I, this. I took a shower tonight and yeah. everything so i mean i don't yeah 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 something so happened. i don't know what happened so something bounced something in the internet yeah but uh it says they're not there well that's okay there I, 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 our our youtube feed is completely different in the chat room uh, you know and so yeah. people are still watching the show i'm, I'm sure uh yeah. So, so that, that's something we can check into. What, yeah, but what either happened. way, we're archived, so they can always watch oh, yeah, what they miss. Yeah, so, yeah. but uh, so look, look we'll, you're gonna you're gonna, you're heading to Dayton on Thursday. Right. We're leaving on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna have 40 meters in the car, so hopefully, well, I'll, I can try working you on 40 meters when you go up Wednesday. Okay. So we'll we'll see or we'll try, try it. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got Dayton, and then the following month, I got some cat shows to do. So, I mean, it's it's been busy spring for me. It's been quiet pretty much all the way up until spring, and then it's now the rush, and Dayton's here. <clears throat> I'm already starting to pack and uh, yeah. get rolling for Dayton. Um, well, we're starting to get our stuff together, too. It, it, it You never know what you're going to need, and you always take too much always stuff, or we do. Much. We usually pack the truck full. We're trying, uh, Kathy is trying to convince me to take less and less stuff, so. Um, well, the less you take, the more you can bring back. Well, you know, we, you know, I think one year I brought back uh, uh, some uh, heat shrink tubing. Uh, one year I brought back a PL259. You're uh, not doing it right. <clears throat> well, you know. The, the, the correct way to approach a ham fest yeah. is you take all of the money that you can get, and if you come home with any, You've done it wrong. Well, I, I, I'll just say one thing. Uh, prices are really getting high up there now. And even people, well, I mean, you know, this webcast, probably run, it'll run a minimum of a couple thousand yeah. dollars. We're, we're staying here five days, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get there early, get set up. Uh, it's too, too late to drive home Sunday. So we'll stay here five days. That means 
I've got a hotel room for my helpers. So yeah. I've got 11 days of hotel rooms, mm -hmm. uh, counting uh, astronaut Doug Wheelock's. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, if I didn't go to Dayton, and, you know, I wasn't out this, you, you know, two or three thousand dollars, man, I could buy me a nice amp yeah. or something. Or, no, you know, no, no, you gotta, you gotta do what you do. Yeah, well, that's, you know, we like that's, it. That's the fun of Dayton. But, uh, anyway, uh, in the chat room, me put my cats on diets, uh, it doesn't work that way. The money in my house is primarily dedicated to the cat food first and then my groceries well, after that. from knowing your cats, what do they weigh about? 80 pounds now? <laughs> Almost. I mean, um, how much food do you eat a day, man? Um, about the same as a horse. Man. Um, oh, it's, it's a massive amount. I mean, the, the, the big girl, she's now 22 pounds. Oh, that's pretty and, good. Uh, yeah. And litter box duty is about the same as cleaning up after a horse. So yeah. you pretty much got the same. But anyway, if you want to come over here, we got a, a little bit. Yeah, of, let's, uh, let's take a look at that and see what you got there. Yeah. Uh, this is, believe it or not, this is the way they actually come from the factory. Average, regular. This is the way the cats come from the factory? Yeah. It's regular okay. kittens. I didn't know they came from a factory, well, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And then all you have to do is add food and water. Yeah. And that rug, that carpet is three foot, three inches, 39 inches across. And that's a two year old picture. I'd lock my door at night. When that I won't sleep. help. It won't? No. You've got a 22 pound bowling ball. Is a door going to stop that? Mm. I mean, that's like you kicking the door in. No, the doors don't work. Okay. And then her littler sister, you can see on the right there, she's got a five foot nine inch vertical leap. So she can hit the pulls on the ceiling fan from the floor. Mm. So there is nothing safe. She ever caught a ceiling blade? No. A fan blade? No, but she's caught the pulls and slapped them like a volleyball. Mm, okay. And then. Uh, I went too far. You give them two or three years, and you get instant show cats. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, I just realized this the other day. Uh, looking at all the show results, uh, these are probably the two number one and number two female Maine Coons in the world right now. I see. I don't know what a Maine Coon is. That's the breed of the cat, like you hear yeah. Persian and Siamese. Yeah, yeah. Maine Coon is is the breed. Where's that? Where are they from? Uh, believe they're actually native North Maine America's Coon? Maine state of Maine. Oh. They are Native America North America's only native purebred. You know, you got Persians and everything else. Hmm. Uh, but th these are them, and this is their actual show. And yes, you actually do the little show. You know. Uh, how many toes? Labor. How many toes does your cat have? Uh, just the regular five. Uh, the room, we're talking about many of the, the cats early that have six. Toes. Many of them have the six. Yeah, polydactyls and Maine Coons. I didn't know. A that. lot of them have the, 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 um, the. So, so you know, the reason we're talking about these cats, I mean, it's a part of your life, but also yeah. they also I can remember they wreck your. Uh, they they wreck your. Destroy things. They steal things. Um, I was almost wishing Katie was here tonight so that I could ask her for more HRO swag. Yeah. Last year, she gave us some HRO goodies, pens, and uh, stuff of that nature. And I could have sworn that I packed them in my suitcase coming home. And I get home, and of course, when you first get home, you just pile everything up and sort through it as you can. I couldn't find my HRO swag. Couldn't find pens, nothing. Hmm. And I'm... Now you start questioning yourself, you know, that people have already questioned my sanity anyway. So I'm questioning, did I bring those home? Did I have them? Where were they? What are they? I don't know. And finally, I, I realized, yes, I bought them home. They're here. And I scoured the house for several days before I finally found where they hidden their HRO pens. They are not my pens. So they, any part that's left on a desk, I bought, Stan, I bought some tie wraps the other night. And rather than leave that, bo uh, that bag on a table, I had to put them away in their bin because so I knew they would not be waiting for Kind of like me. pack rats. You, they take something and they, they have a place they hide it? Or? Uh, multiple places. Yeah. The good stuff they take upstairs. That's where I find all the parts and wire and pieces. And I do not know what they're building. But you the know, dog next door is in serious trouble. 
Guys, some of you guys may remember this. Um, we had Glenn on a show remotely one time through Skype, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. his caps were up on his uh, workbench with all the parts there. And uh, we had a caller call in, and that's before we got our phone line fixed, and we couldn't control the ring volume. And it was so loud that your caps went ballistic, I think, and all the parts went everywhere. The big everywhere. one flew off my desk and landed on my shoulder and used that as a launching pad. And you're talking 22 pounds of bowling ball just jumps off a desk and hits you on yeah. the shoulder and goes. So, yeah, that was fun. But right. uh, since we don't have Katie to do shack pictures, I thought I'd show you my shack pictures. All tonight. right, let's see your shack. And there it is. As you can, that's the little one now. Keep in mind, she's only 15 pounds. So, but they take over the desk. Usually, there's both of them. But in the back, you can see my FT950 and some of my other rigs. That was the shack before. And um, then we had a little bit of a problem. You showed it here on the show that one time. That. Yeah. That, that you've got a video of my shack, my lab. Well, oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, don't do that one. That's oh, actually okay. the lab. Oh, okay. But yeah. we rebuilt. This is part of the house rebuild over the summer. This is the rebuild of the shack. It still is, qualifies as a shack picture, though, because it's got the, the 950 and the antenna rotator in the yeah. picture. Yeah. And then we finally ended up with that. And I saw this idea uh, on somebody else's shack pick that they had done the, the rails. And so I put the, mounted the rails and the shelves and have the cable oh, that's nice runs neat. and everything. And now I've got all of my rigs are in one one nice out of the way spot, but everything's tied into the computers. It's all wired and accessible. Yeah. So yeah, that, that that looks cool. And uh, and there's place for the cats to lay in underneath. This is the lab. This is the new lab. Show them what happened to the lab. The other, the other lab. Let's this see, is, we got we got a picture. We, we got, got some a picture video. Of the old lab. We, we got, got some a video of this. Video of uh, Glenn's uh, right lab. Right after I finished the last book, the cats decided they were going to work in the lab. There's a uh, there's the video and that right we ended there. up with that. Yeah. And then we uh, came back to. Uh, Rebuild Did the you lab. rebuild it? Looks like you got a nice new floor. Or yeah, well, or? actually, that's the same floor. Is it? Um, yeah, and that's um, I finished that about. But 20. you can see it now. Yeah, you can see the floor. Yeah, there's there's not junk on it, but we added the shelves and, and repainted and <clears throat> put the lab back together. So okay. you know, now now you can see we're getting ready, and that kind of leads us into the the next piece that I have, and that is. Coming up in QST sometime in the very near future, I did a review of the Bid X40. And that's right. been one of the things I've been taking up my time. And you notice, you know, I know you did your Bid X in a uh, satellite TV box. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, who was it that did theirs on a cake tin? Was that Dave Castle? Dave did, did one. On I've got a friend, Bill Chisholm, did one in a pop in. Yeah. yeah. And so. Um, the big thing is, you know, where do you find a BIDX case? And I went to looking, and there is a place, amateurradiokits.in, on the web, and they sell these BIDX cases, and they also have them for the micro BIDX, and they come in all colors. And so basically, you take your BIDX board, mount it in place, and they send you the, the case and the external components for it. Mm -hmm. So that and that will be reviewed the bid X and the bid X 40 and the the case um, I was told the other day it will be soon so we're talking probably June or July I don't think it'll make it in time for the the June issue that's usually out before Dayton yeah but uh, it will be out probably in their probably their July time frame and uh, probably gonna move the bid X uh, do the micro bid X shortly after that mm -hmm. and uh, you know, as I was saying, for me, I've just really, I'm ready to go to Dayton. I mean, I've got, oh, yeah. a, I've got a shopping list a mile long, um, and we're planning to rob the bank on the way up, so they might not catch us before we can spend the money. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we are planning to buy just an awful lot. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be doing as we we're talking uh, both Friday and Saturday, I'll be hanging out at the ARRL booth uh, doing book signings and meeting 
people who, who buy the books and just meeting everybody in general. So if I'm there, can you know, come on by? You know, be glad to chat and talk. And if you buy the book, you know, I promise to sign it and I won't charge anything. And, uh, you know, but, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing these. And that's me with the little JT65 transceiver that I, that I had with me. Now, that, is, is that a pixie in there? Yes, that's a pixie uh, okay. board. Inside. So we've got we got Douglas on here uh, that uh, has a pixie, and he's going to put the Arduino VFO and all mm -hmm. that stuff and build it. So, Glenn, tell us about this this little. Uh, that's a uh, trophy. Is it a trophy case? For yeah, it's baseball? a little. That's a softball trophy case that you can get at Hobby Lobby for like two two or three bucks. Okay, and you you put the pixie in there, uh -huh. and you you have the Arduino in there. Yeah. Matter of fact, I've got a video here that AWRL did last year. Okay. Uh, if you want to play that, you can uh, sure. actually see the the 40 meter CW version. So go yeah, ahead I and bring I, I go that. ahead and yeah. bring the video up over there. And that's and you be... you you built JT65 in it, I think, and or one of those didn't yeah, you? Yeah, th this was a 40 meter CW rig, and this was at you put, Hi, you, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X with AWRL at Hamvention 2017, and I am talking with Glenn Popeil, KW5GP, the author of the More Arduino Projects for Amateur Radio, published by AWRL. Glenn, how you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing fine. I like it here. It's a lot of fun. How, what, tell me about the new book. Uh, well, it just came out about two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got 15 all brand new projects. Mm -hmm. And this time, I challenged myself. A lot of the projects in this book, I went over the top trying to make them not no not complex, but more intricate. Do more more functional, do more things, but still keep the price down and keep them easily buildable. Now, for somebody who doesn't have much experience with Arduino or other microcontrollers, is this book going to be over their head, or do you have projects for different entry, uh, entry levels? Each, each project, the, ba the book basically starts a little easy and then progresses towards more complex projects. Uh, all I require is that you kind of know how to solder, know how to read a schematic, and you know, have a basic knowledge of the Arduino, having loaded sketches or blinked some LEDs and, and gotten used to the basics of the Arduino. Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from that, no, it's fully complete and you can just copy the drawings and go. Very good. Now, one of the projects that you have in the book is a, uh, a 40 meter uh, CW transceiver here. Tell me, tell me about this. This is an Arduino powered 40 meter CW transceiver. It's in a three by three inch cube. Wow. This came from Hobby Lobby and it is a um, dual speed tuning, RIT, a built-in electronic keyer, 5 to 35 words a minute, and this whole thing costs about $40. That's amazing. And it's got a color display. That's fantastic. And that this project is in the book. Uh, this is a derivative. In my book, if you notice through my writing, I always don't finish a project. I leave room for you to enhance it. Take it Take it to the next, that's my challenge to you. I give you a functional project, you take it to the next level, improve on it, and show me what you can do. Very good. And when I finished the CW transceiver, I said, I wanna to go to the next level. I wanna finish this one. So I, this one is how I would have finished that project out with the kitchen sink. This is actually my homebrew contest entry in the QRP Archie homebrew contest tonight. Wow, that's fantastic. So, so okay, now, uh, now along with this, you also have another project in the book, I believe, that talks about a WSJT transmitter? Right. This, this uh, unit's bigger brother okay. is in a softball cube, and that actually is a JT65 transceiver. And what it is, JT60, these, we use these Chinese transceiver boards. Uh, there was an article in QST several months ago about them. They're like $11. And what we do, and this started out with the Tentec Rebel, which was also an open source transceiver. And we got Joe Large involved, and it came from a forum question of, can it, the Rebel do JT65? And we're like, it's a CW rig. It only does one frequency. How do we get 65 tones? And we sat back for a quest, just a second. It's like, well, you know, if you can do this, 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 and this, and make this happen, oh my God, it could work. Wow. Two weeks later, Joe Large was involved. He wrote a custom version of his JT65 HF for the Rebel, and then when the Rebel project finished, I said, why can't I do the same thing with one of these Chinese boards? And that's the project that's in the book, and it's basically a, we send control codes to the Arduino, it shifts frequency to generate the 65 tones, but we do it on a CW only board that's $11. $11 from China. For the board. Wow. So the entire JT65 transceiver is about 
50, 60 bucks to build. That's fantastic. I'm going to have to try that myself because I like I like the idea of having a JT65 transceiver all in one like that. That would be a neat thing it's to have. It's an amazing thing. You see this little, it's a direct conversion, any 602 straight, con you'd think, oh, I can't receive anything. First day I hooked this up, I'm sitting there watching Spain, South Africa, and everything off of my little vertical in the backyard. That's fantastic. Now, you just also presented today as part of the uh, Ham Radio and Makers Hackers Forum. How did that go? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was excellent. Um, uh, Kara from the uh, Ohio, or the Dayton. Uh, the Xenia Makerspace, right. Yeah, oh man, she was outstanding. She had some great ideas. They've taken a library and added a makerspace to the local library with the, with the, with the town support. And they've got a beautiful makerspace. So yeah, I th and you know everything uh, I thought was real good this morning. So uh, no, it was a lot of fun. I think everybody in the room had a lot of fun. That's very good. Now, last question for you here before we go. I understand uh, you're a, you're a bit of an aficionado of Maine coon cats. Is that's, that right? That's correct. I actually used to be a judge for the household pet division in the International Cat Show, and uh, I showed Maine coons. And in fact, in 1989, I had the world's best female Maine coon. Wow. And we, you remember, the, you know, the Westminster Dog Show? Yep. We took a best in show at the cat equivalent of that back in 89. Are they helping you with any Arduino projects? Um, define help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are part thieves. They sit on, they, no. Uh, they're a lot of fun. They like to be involved. But yeah, I'm actually showing these two. They're two, uh, two, two and a half year old kittens that are already three feet, four inches long. Okay. And they still grow. Uh, but they're just big, gentle giants. But they steal things. They, you know, if I need a part and it's not there, I got to go looking down the hall or, you know. They're helpful. Very helpful. Yeah, that's good. Help. That's good. Um, now you you've been here at the uh, Meet the Author area at the AWRL Expo today. Uh, are you going to be back again tomorrow? Yes, I'll be back tomorrow from uh, one to three. Okay, so anybody watching? Ten to noon. Ten to noon. So anybody watching this tonight, if you're in your hotel room and looking for something to do, you want to come meet Glenn Popeil and learn about Arduino projects for amateur radio, be here at the AWRL Expo tomorrow, and you'll get to meet him and get an autographed copy of the book. Well, just come on down. It's a lot of fun here. Glenn Popeil, thank you very much. Thank you all right well hey you're going to be signing uh, books your new book is out yeah well it, it came out just before dayton last year uh -huh. and they sold out every copy that they brought i think they brought 200 copies and they sold every one of them out by saturday afternoon mm -hmm. so hopefully they'll bring a lot more this year but uh, i'll be doing signings both friday and saturday over in the awr area i can't talk tonight i will be just across the way from you there, yeah. so I'll be coming over to your booth. I would imagine uh, we're in the same building. I would imagine we're no more than 40 feet apart no. probably no. in here. So we'll get a chance to see you a lot there. Come by and get on the show, yeah. and uh, and uh, we'll have a, a great time. Well, one of the big things that I have planned for Dayton this year uh, is uh, Steve Ford, uh, the QST mm -hmm. editor and mm -hmm. publications director at AWRL will be there this year. And we're going to be meeting to see where do I go from here. We've got two Arduino books out. We've got the microwave networking book out. Um, so we're going to be kicking around ideas. When I finished the second Arduino book, I said, I am just out of stuff. And since then, I have come up with a whole new list of toys to build. Mm -hmm. So there may be an Arduino 3 book in the works. Raspberry Pi is something they've talked about. Uh, maybe doing an update to the multimedia book. So... Uh, and then uh, with the FT8, nobody's got a good FT8 book out. Yeah. Um, and the, the digital modes books that AWR has, they're getting a little long in the tooth. So we may do something for like a digital mode handbook and, mm -hmm. and look at that. So we've got all sorts of book projects that we're going to start discussing. So I'm thinking I'm going to be coming back from Dayton with a mountain of work to, to start playing with. Well... You'll see things up there that give you ideas, too. And oh, man, yeah, you're going to yeah. be busy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, Dayton is my one of my favorite times of the year. Yes, last year the flea market was pretty much washed out. But, you know, it wasn't the year before. And if you've never been to Dayton, go at least once. I mean, yeah. it is just, it's heaven. I mean. But, you know, you know, you know Glenn, I, I, I talk about ham radio in the old days and how, you know, we had a receiver and we built our transmitter and. How that was the good old days, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Hamvention, kind of like the good old days. A lot of people now are going to miss, uh, you know, we've been going 37 years now yeah. to Hera, and that was uh, 
Harrow was always a, a place for people to come together and, and it was a neat experience. And I think the people that, that maybe never get got to go to Hera really missed out in the olden days, maybe. You yeah, know? but you've got a new era at Zena. Yeah, yeah. And I agree, you know, Hera was, you know, it was a legend, it was an icon, it was Hamvention. Yeah. And but Xenia, uh, yes, there were growing pains last year. But you know, I was super impressed with what they did. It's a much bigger space. Xenia is so spread out, yeah. man. And you know, you, we were talking earlier about uh, uh, Hera Arena, mm -hmm. and when we were outside so many years, I never could find my place uh, inside. I mean, I, if a person <laughs> give me a map of the inside buildings, I would get lost. I, yeah. I could not. Uh, comprehend how these rooms all hook together. Yeah, it's like a rat running through a little maze inside yeah. Hera. Yeah, and but but now it's spread out. It's you spread got out individual here. buildings that are named, and yeah. uh, you know they've got that new building this year, and I think yeah. they'll have the, another new building next year. So I mean, it's it can only get better. Yeah, and you know, look at the location they put you in this year. I mean, that yeah. was a, a wonderful place to be well there we there we go again guys that's that's kind of the fairgrounds hey out in the center there uh is where all the food is all Boy, the they food. bring some oh my good gosh they bring some good vendors in and make steaks and everything you want is out there now we didn't get that at no at Hera, you either had cardboard pizza or cardboard hamburger or, or, or a hot dog or yeah. a hot dog yeah. maybe yeah uh and you know you were thankful that you got it yeah. And last year, I think the biggest problem we had food-wise was trying to decide what I wanted to eat. Yeah. It was just amazing, the selection and, and what was oh, there. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to going. Uh, people watching probably have heard. I've been dieting a little bit, trying to lose a little weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've lost about 25 pounds now in the last couple months. And uh, I'm getting tired of not eating. Man, when I go, <laughs> hey, when I go to Dayton, boy, oh, I'm gonna eat the. Well, calories I'm gonna eat don't the, count when you're on the Let me tell you, they, they don't. can't keep hey, up with you. I got a whole big bag of baby roofs. I'm gonna eat oh. those in the truck going up there. I'm gonna get steaks. I'm gonna get oh, uh, donuts. Uh, Absolutely. Man, you know, I, I I'm getting my weight down. We so carry can, a whole box of snacks and stuff yeah. in the in the car with us as we go. I could put a little extra on there, you know. Yeah. Oh, you'll you'll burn it right off. Yeah. But see, calories do not count on road trips. Well, I, I you know, guess when you're not. driving 70 miles an hour, the calories can't keep up with you, so yeah. you lose them already. That's so, true. No, you're in good shape. That's true. But the, the food was outstanding. Um, the people in, in the town of Xenia were just the best in the world. Uh, we stayed at a little bed and breakfast in downtown Xenia, and it was wonderful. It was like an yeah. 18th century house, and it had four rooms that they rented out, So, and the rooms were all taken by hams, and so breakfast... You know, it was a lot of fun. Evenings were fun. And, you know, it was just absolutely wonderful. And, I mean, the buses, after they got the traffic snarl figured out on Friday, bus rides were, you know, five minute in. And I definitely advise taking the park and ride. Don't don't try to drive in. You know, park off site. Yeah. They had traffic directors parking you in well, the Well, the I think the first day there was an issue with traffic and everything. But you know what? That was the first time they've done this. And, and by the second day, I think by oh, they Saturday, had down. they had the roads uh, uh, set up one way, and uh, people got in here very quickly. You yeah. Know. The only problem with Xenia is you got a gang problem in the town. Really? We almost got mugged by a gang in Dayton, a gang Dayton? of ducks. Oh, yeah, ducks. We were Saturday, we said we are going to take the back roads, and we're tooling up the back roads, and, you know, making great time, and it comes to where I have to make a left turn. Well, in front of me, there are three ducks blocking the road. Well. Wow. And then you look to the side where I have to turn, and there are two ducks blocking the road. And then you look in the rearview mirror, and there is a duck coming in to block you in from behind. I mean, what do you expect? You're, you're, going, out, you're going out through the countryside. You, go, you know, yeah. there's going to be ducks yeah, out we there. we got man. a bunch of foreigners in here. And obviously somebody comes and feeds them. But if we yeah. had had a video camera with narration, it was clearly the ducks were there to mug us because as soon as uh, my, my friend Terry jumped out of the car to scare the ducks off, another one was flying in to join the crowd. 
Oh boy. But you know, it, it literally, if we had had a video, it would have looked like we were being mugged by the ducks, but no. Xenia is a wonderful town. The people are wonderful. They all turned out to help with the ham fest. I mean, the, the, the schools and, I mean, I think the whole town turned out to help with this ham fest. And that's something you never saw at, at Hera. And yeah, so yeah. many people with Hera, they forget one thing about Hera. How many of you have walked on that parking lot moonscape at Hera? By the first hour, your shoes are so tired and worn out. Matter of fact, the year before, I literally had a set of almost new shoes get torn up just from walking on that moonscape. Well, but you know what? Oh, if it will still terrible. be, if it will still held there, it would I'd still go be back. there, man. You know, you know it's yeah, uh, uh, Dayton. If you've never been, you really have to go. It's uh, the the yeah. now the, there's several rules of advice. One is if it is ham radio or has ever been made, it's at Dayton. Yeah. Rule two: if you find it, buy it when you see it. Do not say it will be there when I come back. Because it will either be gone or you will not be able to find the location where you saw it. Yeah. Even with a GPS, you're not going to be able to figure out where you, you saw it at. There's a lot of old stuff if you collect boat anchors, let me tell you. Uh, you see the same boat anchors out here for 20 years, man. Mm -hmm. But it just moves from person to person. But yeah, just yeah. you know, changes slides from table to table. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I saw somebody talking in the chat room here about a uh, Viking Valiant transceiver that they've mm -hmm. been working on and had an issue with that was one of the the rigs i was given to uh what, what did we call it uh repurpose and take all the components out and use them in, in other things what's some of the strangest things that maybe you've seen at dayton oh, can gosh. you think of something i can think of two and I, I wish i had bought it and i didn't the guy across from us one year had it looked like about a 20-foot missile yeah it was standing up out there. It had the fins on it and everything. Now, wouldn't that missile, if I'd bought that sucker, I could have brought it home. I could have stuck it in somebody's yard some morning real early, mm -hmm. you know, stuck the nose down in the yard and put some dry ice in the tail. Yeah. You know, where a little smoke comes out of it, you know. <laughs> that would have been cool. You're starting to think too much like me. So, 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 and then another thing I saw, oh, I, uh, two more things. So, and one other thing I saw was there was an autopsy table out there, a stainless steel autopsy table, you know, where... You know, I, I won't go into the details, yeah. but that was out there. <laughs> and then, you know, I remember one year, a guy drove a, a big truck up there, a big box truck, that was full of uh, uh, guns, rifles and Never guns. Saw that one. And I, I think they ran him out probably that, that day when they found out. But, I mean, he had, you know... It, it was full of rifles and stuff. He was selling guns. So never know what you're going to see up here. Yeah, I think one of my favorite things I saw, somebody had, you know those uh, pneumatic air launcher, air cannons you use yeah. to launch antenna wire? Somebody had one that was darn near the size of a small howitzer. Oh, really? I mean, it, it was about, you know, a six-inch diameter barrel and, you know, four feet long. Yeah. It was on wheels and looked just like a little cannon. Yeah, uh, they had that out there. But you know, hey, it's been fun. Boy, we had some fun times up here. We oh, look uh, forward to the trip every year. Yeah. Like I said, 37 years for us. And you know, when it's over on Sunday and you're fixed to go home, you're sad. It's over, and you're already making your plans for next yes. year. We had our reservations yeah. for that bed and breakfast before yeah. we even left. Yeah. But uh, the the one thing for me, and this is what I noticed, is we got there. You know, we left Thursday morning. And when you hit the ground in Xenia, Dayton, Thursday evening, you are nonstop until mm -hmm. Sunday morning. And we, we, we got up Sunday morning and kind of looked at each other and it's like, it's over? It's time mm -hmm. to go home? Where did those last three days go? Because it is over in an instant. We are dead tired and dragging when we get to the hotel that evening. So you, you don't even want to go to eat dinner some nights. You're so tired, man. No, but... Uh, like I say, if you have never been to Dayton, uh, try to go. I mean, it is truly amazing. And uh, some of the forums, well, I went to a couple of forums last year, and they were very, very good forums. Well, and we, we say Dayton, and it is, we're not actually yes. going to Dayton this year. We're going to Xenia. Xenia but, but it is still the Dayton Convention. The, it's, it's the Dayton Amateur, Amateur Radio, Radio Club. Association. And, it's the Dayton Hamvention. It'll always be the Dayton Hamvention. Yeah, it's always Dayton to me, so, whether it's in yeah. Xenia. Because actually, Hera wasn't in Dayton 
Yeah, that's true. It was in Trotwood, I think. Yeah, or Trotwood. Somewhere. Yeah. So, but you know, we always called it Dayton, and it will always be Dayton to me because that's just what it is. But it's it's more the spirit of what it is. You know, Dayton yeah. has always been, you know, the mecca of of ham fest to go to, and they've always done a really good job. Well, and I, and I tell you, uh, over the years, the ham invention, uh, uh, inside chair chairmans, outside chairmans, they've all. I've lost my hat. They've all have worked with us so closely and helped us with just about anything we need. And uh, we appreciate all the hard work that they have done for us. And, and uh, we like trying to get the word out, too. If you're there, come by. Building 2, the, the little red circle is where we're located. Come by and see us. All right. You got anything else, Glenn, before we open the um, hangout? No, I think that's pretty much it. I've caused all the trouble I can cause tonight. Okay. Well, I'm going to post uh, a link in the chat room here for Hangout, and, and let's see if anybody wants to get a Hangout. I'm not going to stay very long tonight. Uh, but there's the uh, link for Hangout. Let me bring Hangout up, and we'll see if anybody would like to join us and be on a show. If you just click on that link, you will, uh, you will be on video and audio and part of the show. So a couple clicks here. I'm guessing I hadn't I'm guessing we've got probably got at least one person, Jeff, uh, in three. Oh, hey, let me make let me make an announcement here. Uh, uh, W1SJ reminded me he is running a uh, general class where you can get your general class license. Uh, he's got a uh, training program that uh, there. I think it's Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Friday. But check his site out. Check his uh, QRZ site out. W1SJ. And you will actually come out of there. They have testing and everything. You will come out of there uh, with your uh, general license. Let's see who we got. We got Douglas in here, and we've got Bill in here. Bill's up in Massachusetts. Hey, hey Bill, Glenn. how you doing? And here's uh, how you doing? We got Jeffrey in there. Hey, Jeffrey, let me get you guys on the show. While here. you're talking about general classes, <clears throat> one of the things we did to, to get to a ham fest. You actually come out of there. Hang on a second. We've got we got some feedback. A whole bunch of folks. Let's see where it's coming from. Okay, I, maybe it's uh, off now. Okay. But um, one of the things, you know, you're, when you're in between ham fest, you've got to, you get that, I got to find one, got to go to a ham fest. And ham fest up here in uh, yeah. northwest Tennessee yeah. not long yeah. ago. And they are 11 years old, I think, 12 years old, yeah. the, at Union City. Yeah, I know. Seven, I they had this seven-year-old boy mission test, and then he turned around Mark, and won not one drawings that they had. They had three big prizes in the drawing this kid was racking up left and right and he was almost in a state of shock from all the stuff he had won and all that he had done that day and it was amazing seeing him do so well so yeah it's, it's all about cool. the youth guys all right hey we've got a quite a crowd coming in and hanging out tonight i see uh i still see uh uh, Mike up here, the, the, the Uber. Okay. I can never get that right. Yeah, you see the oh, Uber goodness. or the Upper? I do. The Uber. <laughs> we got Mike. And, and look, look. Uh, we've got uh, Joe Eisenberg joined us. we got Mark in there. We've got uh, Jim is in there again tonight. Jeffrey. Douglas, uh, he's hiding, but he's logged in. we got Bill and Bill. Hello. You got a crew. Got a, got a crew there tonight. All right. How many of you guys going to work us on HF when we go when we go up to Ohio? Pete's house sick.
Okay, well, yeah, just uh, let's try to make a contact, you know. We'll, we'll be driving all day there. Uh, hey, there's a comment in the chat room. Uh, <clears throat> we need to consider starting an after-show net on D-Star or DMR. Uh, that'd be awesome. I don't have any DMR equipment. I've got D-Star. Uh, but uh, I, I, I've always wanted to start a net up. I'd like to. I'd like to get a net started up, and uh, maybe once a week, or it doesn't even have to be the day of the show. Uh, but I, I need some help. I need people that are willing to help uh, be some uh, net control stations. For instance, me in Memphis might not hear people out toward the West Coast. So if I can get some volunteers, if I can get some volunteers and people to uh, uh, help uh, do a net, let's let's get a net together for a roundtable. And uh, just have a, a good time on HF. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do uh, 40 meters at 7 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock, they'll be on 80 meters. I wouldn't be able to participate all during the show, and, and after the show gets pretty late. Uh, but um, I'd love to have a net, guys. I'd love. To, I, I would participate. You know, I, I, I've been getting on in the afternoons and posting it on our Facebook group and uh, um, making some contacts. I haven't recently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I on a different night. Yeah, I think it would need to be a That's different. Like Tom just said the show yeah. goes so late. I think it would be because I mean I couldn't attend even from from five o'clock on. I'm busy setting the show up, so I wouldn't be able to participate that evening. But we could do it a different day. Tom well, okay. Well, there's this thing called smuggling a rig on board. You're going to be flying on every Tuesday night? No. All right. Well, you can work us when we come home on Monday, um, on Monday the 21st. No. no. Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm trying on Monday the 21st. If you're not leaving until Monday, uh, I can try you on HF from yeah, yeah, we're, we'll be leaving on Monday. Oh, uh, you know, by the time we get torn down, and particularly if, if uh, people are at the loading dock and we can't get loaded and it's 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, that's tough to make a 10-hour drive back leaving uh, Ohio at uh, 4 o'clock in no, the afternoon. We leave at 6 o'clock in the morning. And yeah drive straight through that's what well, we leave Sunday morning well it's not really because it's seven central time remember you got that time zone change too yeah, yeah. if you just check in the chat room during our drive, we can post the frequencies. Um, I, I would imagine you know, we've been kind of hanging out around 7180 when we're on 40 meters, around 71, 79, 7180 in that area. And that Okay, yeah, we, we usually start on 40 meters in the morning, checking the yeah. cars and, and tell them about Oh, uh, you know, we, we're up at 7180 because that's the general band, and that way it'll let everybody have an opportunity to... Uh, Uh, 
it's got no feed. Now there's me. It just came back. Anyone else agree? It's like the hang. Thing to make a call, you know, you're going down and time does something up on the internet streaming. And all right, all right, test one time. Is this, is, this, uh, is this mic better right here? You like to do it, but you also want to travel. You got you know, to right, can you, yeah. you guys hear me okay on this mic? Are you are you hearing me okay? Now somebody just posted in the chat room. Hang or audio keeps muting. No, I don't think I'm ready. Yo guys, can you hear us? Apparently. Yeah. Oh there there's Tom, he's back. I think it's some somebody's in the chat room with a yeah, I think they get some. A hot mic. Well, I'm not going to stay real long. No, it's... Get off in a second. Okay. No, I'm here. I'm not getting any output. I don't know. Right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Tom's going to give up soon, and I don't play him, so... Yeah. Yeah. So many people must have missed the need of the show. So All right, I'm going to come back here. All right, well, I'm here. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like in the background. It's in the chat. I was wondering. I'm going through it. Well, it Baker. comes and goes. Being heard? Oh, there it comes. Okay. Test, test one, two. Test one, two. Is something in the chat room? Yeah, it's in the chat room. It's in the chat room. It's causing it to come up and down. All right. Thank you. Showing here. Yeah. I'm getting. Any, I think it's Hangouts is muting because somebody's got a, a hot mic. I wonder who. I wonder if it's someone in the chat. Or, I mean, in this text, I said. Chat. I think it's somebody in, in the, the hangout. hangout room has got a a feedback and hot mic. I don't think my mic is hot. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll kill my mic here. There we go. Well, I can certainly mute, mute mine. And now, whoever, now that you dropped the video call, our audio's back. I think there's something going on in the Hangout. Yeah, somebody's. I didn't see 10 people in the Hangout. No, we're going to be Mike, Mike, now One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're good now. Can you hear me okay now? I can hear you. 
Well, I don't know what's going on. I was hearing that drip, drip, too, coming back. It's like it's like uh, something screwed up. I don't know. Uh, I think okay, was, I'm back. I think it might might have been an internet problem or a Skype problem. Uh, hang in. Hang out. Let's see. Test one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, can you guys hear me now? You, you guys hear me now. Right? Your bad, Tom. What, what yeah, you, bad? Really? No. You're in the mud, Tom. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, no articulation. It's very muddy. Yeah, when you when you do the show, well, Tom, it's all so good, but every time you come to the hangout, hangout. But it's something in Hangout's not working right. Yeah. Mic test one now, two. See, they're saying you're not the problem. Yeah. You're fine, Tom. In hangout. Oh no. Okay. Very good now. Matter of fact, I don't even have my mic in front of me. All right, guys. Uh, I'll say good night. Well, you sound good. Good, night, good night, Tom. See you in two weeks, Glenn. Glenn. Right. See y'all in up in Xenia, Dayton, wherever we are going at that place in Ohio. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, so, uh, good luck. We got a donation came in while we were on.